Hello YouTube, what is up? Connor Brooks here with another video for you. Um, today I don't have anything to review, I don't have any updates. Today we are just going to watch trains. We're going to have the passenger train running, we're going to do some freight operation. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. Alrighty YouTube, here we are. I finally was able to get my camera set up just like I did my Thanksgiving Day special. Gosh, that was probably two years ago now, or one year. I honestly don't remember. Um, I'm sorry it's a little crooked, but that's the best I could do. So we to run trains, so what we're going to do is we're going to move this train, and then we're going to take our FMP 102 out. He's going to get those two train cars, and this one, and the caboose. Run them around a little bit, and we'll see where we are then, if we want to run some more, or if I want to stop it there. So sit back, relax, and just enjoy watching trains. Of course, you'll get my narration here and there throughout the video. Oh, that's the wrong train. Awkward. Now the passenger train is set, we don't touch him um, unless we stop the freight train and then we'll go through grade crossing sequences, stopping the train, things of that nature. Alright, let's go ahead and get the locomotive out. Now, I will my, um, just mind you, when I pull the train out, it's going to start, it's going to be great. Right when it gets to the main track, it's going to cut off right before and then it'll turn back on. I don't know why it does that, it's always done that, so we will have to wait for it to start back up again. But that is, okay. Now the train that's coming out now is RPP 102. This is the newest addition to the layout, um, and I absolutely love it. Especially because of the new horns I added. I just, it's my favorite train to run. It's an old Atlas. Um, it was DC. Um, we sent it out um, to DCC Trains. Got it upgraded, did a review on it. Um, you can watch that after this. See, like I said, it cuts off, and now we will just cut it back on. Now this is where things get fun because I get to walk around. Perks of a wireless remote, that's all I gotta say about that. So if you didn't watch <coughs> my review on this locomotive, um, we have a horn, a front-facing horn, and a rear-facing horn. Um, and that is prototypical of RFMP. Um, the original product came with a single chime, um, but RFMP did not have single chime horns. Um, they had three chime, and then um, just before CSX took over, they had five chime. Um, I like the three chime the best. That's just a personal preference. Um, so that's why I added the three chime. So we're going to go ahead and back up, pick up these cars, we're going to roll out of the yard, we're going to back up and pick up those cars, then we're going to head out on to the main line, well, the freight main line, the passenger main line is the outer one. And that's all that is needed for me over here, everything is set back up for me to run the train back into the yard when I am ready.
We do not run our trains very fast within the yard. Um, that's not because they can't handle it. I just want to um, make it a little more prototypical. Um, so right now we're running at speed step four of 28. I don't run out of 128. I just run out of 28 because it's on here. Um, I don't really know what that would be out of 128. Um, but this is four, and then on the main line we run it at five. Um, passenger train is 10. Um, most ESU products, I found that five is a good speed. So we run 4611 and 126 at five. The steam train, we run at two. And the switcher, we run at three. And little man is almost ready to go into the main line. I promise. We just got to pick up one more thing here. It's only very recently um, in which well, let's see if we can get them to come. There we go. It's only very recently that I started doing this whole um, picking up train cars, switching out type thing. Obviously, my layout isn't designed to have like an industry or a yard. Um, but it's still fun to be able to move trains around instead of just going back and forth, you know? So, yeah, let's do it. And I like to give a nice long blast of the horn to let everyone on the main line know we're coming. Just in case someone was coming in a, a theoretical, prototypical world, obviously there's not, but just in case, and now we head up to speed step five, and now we are on the roll. Now, I will talk about this while we just have the trains moving around. When it comes to stopping the passenger train, obviously we want the passengers to be able to walk across the train track, not get stuck between two trains with a freight train. Um, we don't have any gates, we don't have anything like that, so on the um, Connor and Jimsville, what we do is um, we stop the trains, the freight trains, prior to the passenger train. Passenger trains get priority here. This is not like CSX, and this is not like it would have been on the R from P, where, well, see, passenger trains might have on R from P since they owned it, um, but obviously with CSX, they're going to get priority over Amtrak because CSX owns the line um, of the r and subdivision. So we'll stop the train, passenger train will do its thing, passenger train will roll out, freight train rolls through. With the smaller trains, 102, 573, and number 2, we stop them right about here. Now, with the bigger trains, like 126, which has the first two cars and these four cars, that obviously is not going to fit in this little curve. So we have to stop them prior to the railroad crossing. And definitely RFMP 4611, which includes the first two cars, these four, and then those two at the end, that's definitely not going to fit around here. So we have to stop that before as well. And I've done a video on operations of my railroad. You can view that if you want to. Um, I'll link it at the end of this video. Um, but we don't constantly you know, blow the horn, blow the whistle with the steam train for great crossings. Um, and that's just because that would be uh, too much for me to be able to have to switch back and forth between locomotives. So normally what I do is I keep the freight train on because this is the one that stops more than the passenger train. Because, you know, we have to stop it um, for the passenger train. All I stop. When it comes to stopping for the passenger train, or sometimes when I'm just feeling it, that is when I will run a grade crossing sequence. And what we do is we blow the horn, you know, we do the whole thing, and then we keep the bell on through the entire town. And then we stop the bell right here, give a blast to the horn so the station knows we're coming, and then that's that. So theoretically, we're using our imagination as if that's the train going through the town and when it's just running, it's, it's not. Um, now, we never run a grade crossing sequence on this, only when we're stopping. When we're stopping this train, we run it there and we run it here. And there's a process of slowing down there. So we go from speed step 10 to 8 to 6 to 4 to 2 to stop. So I will demonstrate that right now since we are just about where we need the train to be. So now what we do is we give a long 
be lasting short. To let the town know the train is stopping. Um, so that way, the cars can just keep on rolling. They don't have to worry about stopping for the train. And like I said, we keep the bell on the whole time. And as we come up to this, right here, we go ahead and slow it down. We're going to go ahead and turn the bell off. And then I keep the train running, but I turn the light off. Um, and that's just because I don't want to run my light down. Um, and we don't want to blind the people of the town. So that is how I prototypically don't run the bat battery. How I don't run down my light. Now I know that LEDs, they're new, they're not supposed to run down. I want to keep them as long as possible. So now we're going to switch to this train as it's coming around. What I really like to do is time it to where this train stops right when this train gets there because that's when I start the great crossing sequence. Obviously we did not get that, but that is okay. Turn the bell off, speed step eight. It's essentially like a speed limit change, if you will. Um, just not one that's marked on the layout, one that's marked in the bridge. We're coming across the bridge here, we go to speed step six. As we round this corner here, we're gonna put on the bell, long blast of the horn, let me know we're coming. As we roll into the station, we go to speed step four. Right about here, we start our grade crossing sequence. Because we are gonna cross it. Speed step two. Where does our wheels get to about here? Speed step one, and stop. I have about a, I think it's, uh, I don't know how big. It's like probably like one, 0.75 inch because you know Bachman the Easy Track they have this one. I have that right there, and it's perfectly in line with the trucks of this wheel. So we like to stop right about in there. Then of course we let the passengers do their thing. They get on, they get off, off to La La Land wherever they are going um, in Virginia because with the R4P this railroad does take place somewhere in Virginia and Maryland um, because modeler's license. Yeah. And a lot of my friends, you know, and I'm sure you guys watching this, you get it. No one really understands except for us how enjoyable it is to play with trains, if you will. Uh, to run our trains, watch our trains go around. It never gets boring. It never does. So, what we're going to do is we're going to keep running this. We're going to put the train back. And I think that'll actually be good because you understand the process I was able to talk it through. So let's go ahead and do that. Head right up to speed step 10. The bell goes off halfway between the rock wall. And then the bell goes on at the crossing. All right, now we come out back to 102. Turn the headlight on, get the bell on. Let them know we're moving. We go to speed step three here because we don't want to go past the railroad crossing without getting our full grade crossing sequence in. Once we know we're going to make it, we increase to five. Let them know we are approaching the station. We roll through. So let's see, make sure this is still set for that. It is, that is set for that. Good, so I want to get up for a little bit, which is nice. I love sitting here. This, it's, a very, it's a very good spot to sit. So the train rolls through. Again, we don't like to run our trains fast here. Prototypical, and just because we don't want to run out our train, run, yeah, no, run out, that's, we'll take it. You know what I'm trying to say. We don't want to wear out our locomotives. Because um, we want them to last as long as possible. Yeah. While we are just waiting, I guess I will go ahead and tell you guys um, 
In about 15 days, I am leaving for college, um, which is going to be in Daytona Beach, Florida. I'm going to Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University to become a commercial airline pilot. Um, I know I'm different than trains, but it's still fun. I got my pilot's license a couple of weeks back, my private pilot license after a year of working, thank goodness. And, <coughs> excuse me. So you're not going to see many videos of the layout, um, so I definitely wanted to get this video out so you can see the layout before I leave. And of course I'll make another video before I leave saying my goodbye and that you will see me in three months. I just wanted to put that out there. Um, so we like to keep this train here because you probably can't see it, but on the other side of the church there are people watching and taking pictures, having kids there. They like to look at the caboose, you know, which is on display for the town. Sometimes we have locomotives there. But today, train cars. Sadly, we don't have any special um, things to uncover the trains. We just lift them up. Not very typical, but it'll do the trick. So now as we roll past here, stop the train, switch this track. Now this is about the time where I'm going to go ahead and get up because you know, the train is going to be over there. And of course we're after running a grade crossing sequence going back across the railroad crossing. And there it is. Never gets old. What did I just step on? Yeah, it's not important. So, um, while we're just waiting, I have this designed so that way I can bring trucks. Theoretically, this will be hooked up to the truck. We can bring trucks in here, um, things like that. Right now, I just have this sitting here because we don't have a place for it yet. But I just wanted to put it out there that that is something that is doable. You can also close the gates, which is super fun. If this is your first time seeing my layout, um, I have updates and things like that that you can go watch. But if this is your first time viewing my channel, I'd like to say thank you. I uh, hope you enjoy my layout. Nothing big, nothing grand, but it definitely does the trick and it's fun to play around with. Uh, I encourage you to go look at my other videos. Subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment down below. Oh no, I knocked the whole train out. Well, that's embarrassing. There we go. Don't tell anyone. If you enjoyed this video, um, go ahead and let me know in the comments. Um, because I can obviously do more videos like this if this is something that you guys want to see on a regular basis. We can even do a video of a different video for each train, you know. We have the passenger train, but every train is different. They have their own little unique quirks about them. Um, yeah. Again, I'd like to say thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for choosing my channel. Um, I look forward to seeing you in the future. And I look forward to hearing from you, reading your comments. Always love reading your comments and things like that. So I'm going to sign off here. And we will just enjoy me putting this train away. As always, have a great day, guys. Thank you for watching. make it easier for me so I don't have to walk back the next time I bring a train out. Huh. Alrighty, bye guys.